When you present the celebratory cake at a birthday or wedding, you want it to have a combination of great taste and of course, stunning good looks. On today's show, I'll use one cake recipe to make three frosted cakes that are bound to get a lot of attention. A strawberry ombre cake, a lemon mousse cake, and a berry layer cake. Plus joining me today is Michael Jabrowski with his technique for making a mirror glazed cake. All today on Martha Bakes. Ombre is the word to describe the gradation of color from light to dark. And I'm using this idea for my pink hued strawberry ombre cake. It may look ruffled on the outside, but it's bursting with color on the inside. And now to make the cake, which we're going to use in each of our recipes today, uh, we're using the reverse creaming method. The butter is put in after the dry ingredients are all mixed and you get a really uh, nicely textured cake. So in a glass measuring cup, put one and a quarter cups of milk and four large eggs. Just crack the eggs right into the cup. It's part by hand and part by machine. And of course, use the best eggs, whole organic milk, very important, and whisk the eggs right into the milk. And you can add one teaspoon of vanilla extract, but make sure the vanilla extract is really, really fine quality. When we were testing this cake, I used vanilla bean, but vanilla bean is very expensive. And if you use a really good vanilla extract, you can get almost as good a taste. That's good. So now the dry ingredients into the bowl of your mixer that's fitted with the paddle. Three cups of cake flour, one and three quarters cups of sugar, one tablespoon of baking powder, and one teaspoon of salt. Mix this together. Now two sticks of butter at room temperature. And just add the wet ingredients. Add about a half first to moisten the dry and then add the rest slowly. And now I'm gonna mix it just a little bit more before I start to add the color. It's gonna make this an ombre cake. So once your batter is finished, divide it amongst five bowls. You wanna get even amounts because we're making eight inch layers and all the cake pans, they're eight inch by two inches. They are buttered, floured, and lined with a parchment bottom. We're going to make one layer natural. Then we're using a deep pink gel food coloring. We're going to make our batter different shades of pink. So I'm adding like a third of a toothpick. I'll use a half of a toothpick. A little goes a long way. I'll use three quarters of a toothpick and a whole toothpick just to see if I'm going to get the right colors. So swirl that around. We want to get the coloring off the stick and stir that. The cakes bake slightly darker in color than the batter itself. So there's a very nice color right there. Now let's see this one. Quite a bit more color in this one. Hmm, definitely ombre already. Ombreing down the line. Now here we had three quarters of a stick. Oh, very good. And our strongest color of all. So now put your colors in the appropriate pan. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. These cakes will bake about 15 minutes. Cool the cakes thoroughly before you decorate the cake. And so now assembling the cake. Start with the darkest pink. And I like to use a cake round. Make sure the cake round has a little something underneath just to hold it in place. You can use a little frosting or you could use tape. And now, first step, warm a half a cup of strawberry jam. And we want a thin flavoring of the jam on the surface of the cake. I didn't strain it, I didn't do anything. And then a cup of buttercream. This is a half cup half cup. And 
spread this. You want a nice even layer all the way to the edge. Now the next deepest pink, this one, another brushing of jam. And if you're wondering what kind of frosting this is, it's a pink hued Swiss meringue buttercream with a vanilla flavor. And layer number five, the last little brush. We're using a local farm made jam, very flavorful and keeps the moisture of the actual cake in. Spread this. And we want to do a light coating of icing all over the cake. It will serve as what we call a crumb coat, covering all parts of the cake so that there won't be any cake showing through. You could chill the cake at this point. It would be very good to refrigerate for 20 minutes, and then you're ready to completely decorate the cake in a very beautiful, unusual way. The pastry bag should be fitted with a large petal tip, and you can see it's wider at the bottom than at the top. This is a number 127, and it's filled with the same buttercream frosting. Start in the very center of the cake and make your center tight, and a turntable really helps. Just go round and around, and don't be afraid to push that tip down in the top of the frosting. And have a damp rag right next to you so you can wipe the tip. And you can stop and then add a petal, another petal. And what it looks like when you're done is a great big ruffled flower. Very cute. And you just keep going and going and going. And it uses up a lot of frosting. Did I mention that the frosting for this cake is 18 egg whites and three pounds of butter? The ultimate result is certainly worth it, I think. Now, this is the moment of truth. Use a very long, narrow, sharp knife and cut straight down. And now with an offset spatula. Uh, so beautiful. That is a thing of beauty. Enjoy. This lemon mousse cake is made using the same recipe as the ombre cake. The only difference is that the cake batter calls for the zest of one lemon and no lemon juice. And now for the lemon mousse filling. Uh, it's kind of a lemon curd that is lightened and uh, also uh, stiffened a little bit with unflavored gelatin. So first, soften one and a half teaspoons of gelatin in one tablespoon of cold water. In a small, heavy saucepan, we have six large egg yolks. Add one cup of granulated sugar, three quarters of a cup of lemon juice freshly squeezed, the zest of one lemon, approximately one tablespoon plus two teaspoons, one and a half tablespoons. Beautiful. Mix this together and heat this mixture with one stick of butter. Cut into small pieces. The butter is going to melt right into that lovely egg yolk mixture. So now once the butter is all melted and the sugar is dissolved, add your gelatin. Once the gelatin is dissolved, strain this whole mixture through a fine sieve, cover with a piece of plastic wrap. It's a good idea to lay the plastic wrap right on the surface of the curd. That way, no skin will form. And get this right into the refrigerator. It has to set, and it will do that in about two hours or overnight. So we've baked two layers of that wonderful cake and each layer should be cut in half so that you'll end up with a four layer cake. Here's our lemon curd. It's well chilled. It has no skin on the top and just soften it with a rubber scraper. You could use it this way, but it's so heavy. So what I like to do is lighten it with one cup of heavy cream 
And even with the whipped cream, the gelatin will maintain a firmness and allow the filling to maintain its height. And you can stir until you get most of the lumps. I don't think you'll get 100% of them out, but it looks really good. So now we're using about one and a half scoops per layer of the filling. And spread this as evenly as you can. See why I like this wonderful turntable? It just really enables you to get to where you're going easily. And now add your layer back on. Another scoop and a half. This cake is going to be completely covered with a meringue, so it doesn't matter if it's a little lopsided. You can straighten it out with the meringue frosting. And now your next layer. And your top layer. And you can turn this one over and remove the parchment. And now you can chill this and make your meringue. So if you've been watching our series on baking, you probably know by now how to make Swiss meringue. But this meringue, 12 egg whites, three cups of sugar, and it's been heated until there are no more grains of sugar and the egg whites are warm. Add a pinch of salt, a teaspoon of vanilla. Whip this until you have beautiful, glossy, stiff peaks. In about 10 minutes, we will have our beautiful meringue. So our meringue looks really beautiful. Add one teaspoon of cornstarch and one teaspoon of white vinegar. This will help stabilize the meringue. That little tiny bit should help. Uh, by the way, the cake has been chilled and it is resting atop a smaller cake pan. We want the meringue to kind of encase this layer cake. And there we have our meringue frosting. Oh, so beautiful. We do a crumb coat first. Crumb coat is a coat of icing or meringue or whatever just to cover the entire cake. And now, for the finishing touches on this gorgeous cake, we have two pastry bags fitted with three quarter inch round tips. Go all the way down to the bottom and just go all the way around. Ultimately, it will be a crown of meringue. Looking good. So now, using a kitchen torch, just lightly torch the top of the crown. Get it centered on your pedestal. And then, to make it extra, extra, extra special, delicious, right before serving, pile the center with the best raspberries you can find. So here you have a crown of meringue encasing a lemon-filled cake topped with a center of red, ripe raspberries. Think of this as a lemon meringue pie in cake form with berries. Since we've already baked the layers of this delicious layer cake, I'm going to make berry cake. This is a berry layer cake. I've made one batch of the batter. The berries will mix better into the batter if you sprinkle them with just a tad of cornstarch. This helps them suspend in the batter. Flour sometimes works the same way. This is 15 ounces of blueberries. So just put these into the batter and gently fold in. We have three 10 inch by two inch cake pans that are buttered and lined with parchment, which is then again buttered and lightly floured. And we wanna evenly divide this batter into the layer pans. So the best way I think is to put big scoops. This is a half cup scoop. So I'll add a big cup into each and we'll just keep dividing until we get an even amount in each pan. You can also do this by weighing. Go like this to level it out or you can also spread a little bit more quickly with an offset spatula. 
Make sure your oven is preheated to 350 degrees. That should be done before you even start putting the batter in the pan. This berry layer cake is made using exactly the same recipe as the ombre cake. The only differences are that it calls for blueberries and cornstarch and no lemon. So get these right into the oven in about 30 minutes. So here is our buttercream. And we're going to fill the cake and frost the cake. I've reserved two cups, about two cups of buttercream to adjust the coloration of the frosting for decorating. And we have one and a half cups of black raspberry jam that's been put through a strainer. This goes right into our Swiss meringue buttercream. This makes the buttercream especially delicious. Black raspberries are smaller than red raspberries, generally, and very, very intense flavor. So just incorporate the black raspberry jam. This makes one of the most beautiful fillings and frostings you've ever seen and tasted. So scoop between each layer. And on a turntable, just spread your frosting in a nice even layer. Isn't that an intense color? And add your next layer. So when you see a cake sort of sloping down like that, you can just build up the filling a little bit to make the layers more even. And the next layer. And then you have to do the sides. And if you find that this spatula is a little too long, you can switch to a shorter spatula for the sides. Easier to maneuver. So now here is the leftover frosting. And to make this three different shades of mauve, you can lighten a cup with some of the buttercream that we have right here. And varying amounts of light mixed with the dark will give you three different shades of buttercream. And I have some already made, light, medium, and dark. And just start decorating. We can make swirls like this. And it's basically decorating the top of the cake. And then let's try this color. It's starting to look gorgeous. And you want to fill in the nooks and crannies, I call them, with various colors. Now we'll try the lighter color. Mm, how pretty that is. How about just a few berries here and there? Not a lot, because there's a lot of berries inside. You can serve this cake with some berries on the side, if you wish, some whipped cream. It's so pretty and so tasty, the way it is. There, just a touch of berries, and maybe a couple blackberries. Blackberries are very good for you. I think less is more. So here is our berry cake. Nature's sweet treat displayed in all its buttercream glory. Don't you agree? Well, if you're not familiar with the astonishing cake trend known as mirror glaze, you're in for a real treat. Today, Michael Zabrowski is here to share his expertise and his tips for creating a cake so beautiful, it almost doesn't look real. Welcome, Michael. I'm well, very thank you. happy that you're here. Tell me a little bit about uh, how you got into the world of pastry. Well, when I was a young man, I was interested in cooking, food, and dietetics, and nutrition, and I just couldn't decide what to do. So I went to school for dietetics, and I was en route to be a dietitian. And um, You're far away from there now. I'm far away from there now, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I graduated, and I just felt like I wanted to go to culinary school, and so I did. And then what? Well, then I went on to climb up the ranks like most cooks and chefs do. You know, I started out as a young cook. I worked for Daniel Balud, for example. Oh, well, it's wonderful. And, uh, and you're writing books now? I'm writing books now, yes. And practicing all new techniques. We are. And teaching. Learning and teaching. Isn't that what you're doing all the time? That's exactly what we're doing. I think we all do that, yeah. all of us. Never stop learning. No. So um, to make this amazing glaze, this is an example of this mirror glaze. Yeah, mirror glaze, or in French we call it the miroir. I put a, a white glaze on top of the dark lace, and then we give it a swipe with the spatula to create that pattern. I see. 
That is so beautiful. You know, a lot of people think that the mirror glaze is something new, um, but it's actually been around for quite some time. And the secret ingredient? Secret ingredient to mirror glaze is gelatin. Uh -huh, it's the gelatin that, that helps to really contribute to that, that extreme shine. A leaf gelatin? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Well, I can't wait to see how you do it. All right, well, let's do so. it. So what I have here is heavy cream, and I have some water. And what I'm going to do is whisk in some sugar. So how much heavy cream? So in here, I got 580 grams of heavy cream, and I got 320 grams of water. And then there's 760 grams of granulated sugar. Okay. So at this point, I'm just getting the sugar dissolved. And then the other secret ingredient in here is we have some glucose syrup and invert sugar. The glucose syrup and the invert sugar helps to keep this recipe. Two separate ingredients. Two separate ingredients. Yes. That's primarily glucose. And what they do is they help to keep the glaze nice and soft. And now we're going to add in the cocoa powder. Oh, good. Now, and what kind do you use? We definitely use Dutch processed. That is a process where it gets alkalized, and what that does is it creates to that deep, dark color that you see there. Mm -hmm. like almost, a, almost black. Almost black. Now, are there some cakes better suited to this kind of mirror glaze than others? You want to glaze the cake while it's good and frozen, and therefore the gelatin kind of solidifies onto it, and it has that, that oh, beautiful okay. look. So now that I got the cocoa powder incorporated, all I want to do is bring it to a full boil to make sure I get everything good and dissolved. I also have a little bit of salt, so that just came to a boil. The first tip is do not boil the gelatin. Oh, so what did you do with the gelatin? So the gelatin needs to be what's called bloom. That just means it's hydrated in water. It takes about a good five to seven seconds. Squeeze it out. And now I, here's what I have. So you see, it's very jelly. Very jelly. Yeah. Yeah. It needs to absorb approximately five times its own weight in water. And that's what I have here. Okay. And that goes right in. And then that gets dissolved. Now, the second tip is to use an immersion blender, which I'm going to do right now. And that is really going to get the gelatin completely right. dissolved. Okay. That's enough? Just that little bit? That's it. That's oh. all it takes is a pretty high power. Okay. And now we're going to strain it. So this is a fine mesh strainer. And that's just going to catch any little particles that might have remained. This needs a full 24 hours to solidify in the refrigerator. If I were to glaze this right away, it's never going to work proper. So now we have our glaze that's rested for 24 hours. Right. We have our mousse-coated chocolate cake. Right. And this is the white? And that's the white glaze. Okay. It's gonna have and what's nice, that made out of? It's a white chocolate base, but it also has uh, titanium dioxide, which makes it super white. Sounds exciting. <laughs> so the cake is on a stand on top of a rack, on top of a parchment-lined baking sheet. Important because then you can reuse what drips off, right? You can reuse what drips off, okay. and it gives a chance to kind of you know drip down, and I can yes. clean up the bottoms. Uh -huh. um, Next tip is to use the glaze at a proper temperature. Every glaze has a different temperature suggested. This one, it's approximately 85 degrees. Okay, I can feel a little warm. A little bit warm, yes. yeah. All right, cake is frozen, and we do it. So it's... I go around the edges first. <gasps> so much. Sure oh, my I... gosh. No wonder it's so beautiful. All Look right. at that. <gasps> and now I'm going to put some in the spatula. And we swipe. And there she is. That is the most modern looking icing I've ever seen. But I never get tired of it. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. Well, thank you very much. This is a very exciting procedure and I can't wait to learn all the techniques that you're teaching the next generation of culinary experts in America. Thank you. And thank you at home for watching. See you next time on Martha Bakes. Using a basket weave tip, pipe equally spaced vertical lines with the tip's ridge side facing up. Working from the bottom left corner, pipe a short horizontal line extending only over the first vertical line and stopping at the beginning of the second vertical line. Then, pipe a second horizontal line across the second vertical line creating a staggered pattern. Continue piping across the vertical lines to create a basket weave pattern.